Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on the topic of momentum. In this video, I'm just going to provide a quick definition of this concept and explain along the way a physical intuition for what it represents, as well as basically explain why we care. So to motivate that, let's return to this question that we've been asking ourselves, which is how well an object can actually resist a change to its motion. And we encountered this question and already answered it, in fact, when we were talking about Newton's laws. In particular, we said that Newton's second law, f equals ma, provided us with a perfect description, an answer to this question. Because it told us that the force that we need to apply in order to generate some acceleration a just depended on some quantity which we called the inertial mass of the object. A larger mass meant you needed a larger force in order to achieve the same acceleration. And that certainly seems to be addressing this question of how well do you resist a change to your motion? Because acceleration is exactly what changes motion. So a large mass means you're resisting that change to your motion. But is that really all there is to it? So let's dig a little deeper because there's actually more going on here. And what we're going to do is think about a car which is traveling along some road that's about to turn. So we need our car, which has some initial velocity in this direction, to experience some acceleration in this direction in order to end up moving along this sort of trajectory. Now, we can use kinematics to determine what that acceleration is, and then we can use F equals MA to figure out what force we need in order to actually make the car experience that acceleration. And according to our answer so far, that's all we need. We've now got the acceleration, we've figured out the force, done deal. But, of course, the initial bit of finding out the acceleration via kinematics depended on the initial velocity. And that's pretty obvious. If I make this car move much faster, then the trajectory it will follow with the same acceleration won't be one that stays on the road. You'll end up swerving off potentially into somebody's house or whatever happens to be on the edge of the road. So velocity of the car also matters. Now, this may seem kind of shocking, but this information is actually hidden inside our previous answer. So we said F equals MA provides us with the entire description of the motion. And now we're saying, oh, but you need to know something about the velocity. So how is that actually going to be consistent? Well, what is acceleration? Remember, it is the time rate of change of velocity. Given that, we are now one step closer because we've at least involved velocity, although we're talking about the time rate of change of it. So let's think a little bit further. I can manipulate this by pulling the m inside the derivative. And I can do that, right, because mass is constant, so it has no effect. So I can write this now, instead of m times the time rate of change of velocity, as the time rate of change of the product, mv. Now, doing that has given me this nice quantity, or this nice product, m times v, that seems to describe, actually, the motion much better. Because now it's got the mass, as well as the actual velocity with which I'm moving. So what this is saying is, if I'm going to make an effective change to this product mv, then if I've got a large mass or a large velocity, I need a large force. Okay, so this is getting towards the right idea. The faster the car is moving, the larger the force had to be to make it actually follow the desired trajectory. So this m times v actually encodes the direction, if I make it a vector, the speed and the mass all in one quantity. And that is this all-important quantity of momentum. 